Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the head of content at Informa Pharma Insights, the publishers of Script, Pink Sheet, In Vivo, and Generics Bulletin. We're here at the Biotech Showcase in San Francisco, as Biotech, Biotech Showcase 2019. Uh, it's an opportunity for industry stakeholders, whether it's uh, Big Pharma, uh, the biotechs, or investors, all to get together to review uh, what happened in 2018, but also then to, to look forward and sort of see you know, what relationships can be created uh, as we go forward. A lot of the money that was raised and a lot of the deals that have been done are usually in the oncology space, but that doesn't mean that that's the, you know, exclusively uh, where it's going. There is uh, a lot of excitement also, the opportunities in the rare diseases space, which actually gives biotech companies almost an opportunity to actually develop their own products and uh, have commercial uh, infrastructure. I'm joined by Ian Nicholson, who's Hi, the Mike. CEO of F2G, a UK um, uh, biotech company. That's right. Um, and you're in that ultra uh, rare disease space, but you're tackling sort of the a a a well, fungi. Yeah. Um, and we're, but we're tackling the serious invasive fungal infections that kill people. These are immune compromised patients who are generally hemato-oncology patients or transplantation patients whose immune systems are compromised. And these invasive fungal infections take hold generally in their lungs and are very difficult to treat. There are some drugs on the market already, but there's old classes of drugs. And what we're doing is developing a novel mechanism drug, a completely new mechanism, the first new mechanism for 20 years in this space. Right, and, and, and is a new target as well? Or it's is a new target? target, yeah. It's a new target, Mike, yeah. Okay, so, so could you describe what, the, what that target is? Yes, of course. So the target is fungal DHODH which is an enzyme involved in the pyrimidine biosynthesis pathway. So by shutting that down, we basically kill the fungus. And it's very specific to the fungal DHODH. Humans have the same enzyme, but we're 2,000-fold more selective against the fungal enzyme than the human enzyme. And that target was discovered in-house within the company. We haven't licensed it in from academia or from a research institute. We developed and discovered that target ourselves and used that as the basis for a drug discovery program. Right. Right, and the chemistry, where, where was the chemistry done? The chemistry was all done in-house. It was using a, 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 re, a relatively medium throughput screening uh, from a combinatorial library. And then we've taken that chemistry, developed the SAR, developed compound libraries and series of compounds around that, and selectively developed the candidate that is now in a phase 2B study. Right, okay. And that phase 2B study would involve how many patients? Roughly 100 patients. Uh, it's a global study, so we have sites now open in the US, Australia, in Europe. We have four different countries already signed up to the study in those territories. Right. Uh, I, would, I would describe it as a sort of yeah, an ultra rare disease. I mean, yes. what, what, what's the sort of the, the incidence of the, yes. uh, the condition? Yes. Well, there, there, there's several indications here. The biggest one is invasive aspergillosis, which impacts between 80 and 100,000 patients a year. Uh, and then we also treat some very difficult to treat rare mold infections. And for some of those rare mold infections, they're ultra orphan conditions for which there are no approved therapies. In other words, the patients don't have anything for them. And they're very high mortality, all of these indications. Right. Okay, so, so there's clean un unmet medical need. You, you've got a, a new target. Uh, you take it to phase 2B. So, you know, that costs money. So, you know, yes. ha what, what is the track record of, of, of raising money and, and getting support? Well, we've, we've actually been very successful in that regard. I think people can now, investors can now distinguish between antifungals and these rare disease indications, which are relatively high priced as, as indications, versus some of the antibacterial companies which have struggled a bit with their commercial models. So we've been very fortunate. So we've raised money from Advent Life Sciences in London, Novo Ventures, are a key supporter of ours, Brace Pharma Capital, and as you probably know, we've made a couple of announcements for new capital coming into the company very recently. So that was uh, the European Investment Bank, yes. um, which was a, a loan. Yes. Uh, how, how, did you put a number on that? Sorry, yes, that yes, and we've disclosed that, and we just signed that in November. Yeah. So the European Union is very keen to develop new drugs which treat unmet indications which are relevant in Europe. And in the Netherlands and Belgium particularly, and in Germany, the resistance rates to the standard of care, the ASOLs, are very high. 
So in some territories in the Netherlands, one in three patients is resistant to standard of care. And so they're very keen to sponsor companies to develop new drugs for indications which impact European citizens. And we were the beneficiary of a 24 million euro loan, which we negotiated with the EIB. And that's all been done through our subsidiary company, which is based in Vienna, Austria. Right. And so in a post-Brexit world, is that going to be important? It is important, and I think it, it, it is now very difficult for UK-based companies to access that kind of financing, unless, of course, in our case, we had a subsidiary in, in Austria, and also most of the funding will be used uh, to spend that money in European clinical studies, and in our, all our manufacturing is done in continental Europe as well. So you mentioned about the... Um, so sort the of resistance pressure. Yes. What 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 do the molecule that you've developed or you know, the chemistry you've developed? How are you going to you know, counter the, those yes. uh, resistance pressures? That's a very good question. So our molecule is a completely novel mechanism. Uh, the resistance we see at the moment is against the azoles, which are the most widely used class of drugs for these indications. And generally people think that it's because of the wide use of fungicidal azoles in agriculture that the fungi have developed resistance to the class of drugs. Whereas we're coming in with a completely novel mechanism which has no cross resistance and therefore maybe in many, many, many years time resistance will develop but at the moment we think it's going to be not a problem for us. Yeah, I guess if it's um, in a sort of a, a rare disease setting it's going to be restricted the amount of exposure anyway. Exactly, yes, exactly. You know, we're not talking millions of patients here, we're talking tens of thousands of patients. So, phase 2B, um, have you started the recruitment of, the, of, of that trial yet? Yes, we have, and, and actually the recruitment's gone well. It's an open label study, and what I can say to you is that safety and efficacy are very encouraging to date. That's about as much as I can say at this stage, Mike, but it's encouraging, and the recruitment's ahead of our plans. Right, and, and the readout? Yeah. So, so we will get a data readout from the first 50 to 100 patients by about the end of next year. But of course, as it's open label, we get a handle on uh, how the agent is performing. And we're planning for a phase three study as well at the end of this year. Okay, so what's the end point for the phase 2B? Well, the end point of phase 2B, generally in these very serious fungal infections, it's all cause mortality at day 42. And that's been used widely as a primary endpoint. But of course, we will be looking for a, no a number of other markers of efficacy. Right, okay, and the, then a phase three. Yes. So even before you've got the complete readout of the phase 2B, you're going to start a phase three. Start a phase three, a randomized control phase three. And will that be again global? Or? It will be a global study. It'll be roughly 200 to 250 patients, we think. We're just finalizing those protocols ahead of discussions with FTA, which are coming up in the second quarter this year. Right, and the, and the sort of the, the financing of that? I mean, yes. you, you've, got the, you've got the money yes. in place, or do you need yeah. to raise more money? It's a very good question. You know, we're a biotech company, we're always raising more money, and I'm pleased to tell you that we just announced this week that a very significant, sophisticated, uh, US-based investor, Morningside, have joined our syndicate. So we've got Novo Ventures, Advent, Brace Pharma Capital, and now Morningside. Alongside the money from the EIB, we think gives us a, a sufficient uh, horizon to feel that we can now fund this agent all the way to registration ourselves. So, um, not wishing to sound rude, but you know, you've been in the industry for, for, for a number of decades and, and therefore been through uh, you know, many investment cycles. Um, when you were out, you, you've been out there sort of selling the story, sort of the, sort of the traction you, you're getting, how different is it from you know, where it was, say, 10, 20 years ago? Yeah, well, I think, as you probably know, in the public markets in the US, and many of the antibacterial companies have suffered in terms of their valuations of late. Sure. And that's largely, I think, down to the reimbursement models for antibacterials. Whereas in the antifungal space, um, the prices of the currently marketed drugs are relatively high. It's, it, it can be looked at as a rare disease environment, very much as you suggest. So we are getting traction with investors who I think the sophisticated investors see the difference and see that we're more like a rare disease company than a, an antibiotic that may be just kept in reserve as a, as a, as a last agent of resource. Sure. And you know, a lot of you know, biotech companies who are pursuing a, a rare disease model actually are almost able to execute a, a plan to 
you know, become commercial organizations themselves. I mean, is, is, is that what you're thinking or are you here to secure partners from big pharma? It's a very good question, Mike. <clears throat> Any biotech company, I think, particularly late stage companies like our own, need to have a plan to take the agent to market themselves. I think now that we've announced these recent financings on top of what we already had as a strong syndicate, we feel we could do that ourselves. And don't forget, this is a niche population. So the number of MSLs and salespeople you might need is very small, maybe 20 to 30 in the US, and the same perhaps in Europe. So it becomes feasible for a small company a UK-based company, an Austrian-based company, to develop a, a, a credible story and a credible approach to marketing the agent ourselves. And that would be, you know, something that we have to have as our, as our core strategy. And that's what we're doing. Okay, great. Well, Ian, thanks very much for uh, Pleasure, you know, stepping by and, and telling us. And uh, I look forward to you know, seeing how the company progresses. Thanks, Mike. Great to see you again.